Oh, it's this guy again. Oh, you know what I what I realized? The three key area. There are probably keys scattered in random places to let you open that place up. Vicar is very powerful and not much is known about him. Attack has weak points for massive damage. Good luck. Not much is known about him, but he has weak points apparently. And he's a giant enemy crab. In before he's actually a giant enemy crab. It'd be really cool, that reference. He's a giant enemy mage, I guess. You have finally come to face me. How courageous, but foolish. You can never defeat me, I control Alwa, and you can never win. How did you obtain all the ornaments? I must have underestimated you, but you are no match for my powers. I see, he's one of these. He's gonna appear left, I knew it. The platform is, like, perfect for him. Because of this door on the right side, I'm assuming that he has multiple phases. Damn it, Toho! I'm screwing this up, aren't I? Oops, I got headshot. I actually had the wrong uh, weapon on. So if I hit him, he disappears instantly. It's good to know. See. Oh, what the? It's not. It's not preset. Got him. I think hitting on the top side is probably the safest. Although I screwed that up. I could have played that better. But you get the most opportunities hitting from the top side. Damn it! Uh, maybe I'll just play it safe then. I think I'll just play it safe. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this song. It's too, like... It's way too medieval castle. Even though it is like a castle place. It doesn't sound good. Like, you know Shovel Knight? If you know Shovel Knight, um, Kingman stage is obviously a medieval castle, right? But the music sounds great. In general, Shovel Knight just is a really good game. I really like Shovel Knight. Crap. I, I messed up. Oh, I'm reacting way too slowly. Damn. You know, I, I realized that I haven't played League of Legends in like four months now. The last time I played it was uh, at the end of the season. Maybe I played like one or two ARAMs after that. Yeah, it's been about four months since I played League. League is a game that actually makes you have good reflexes, but because it's been a while since I played it, I feel like my uh, some of my reflexes have deteriorated. Some of my mechanics. I'm pretty sure I suck at the game now. I would not be surprised. Shh, I'm messing this up badly. Crap. Ah, crap. Recently I've really wanted to play League, but I'm just so out of it. My interest in League is just non-existent, non-existent right now. The bubble killed me. My own bubble killed me. Ah, oh, man. You know what I could do? I could probably bubble up to it when it's floating as a head. Right? That makes sense. Not like that, though. That's not a good idea. That's also not a good idea. 
Wait, what? Oh my god! Oh wow, that actually does a lot of damage. Crap, I can't, I can't, I can't be greedy. It's not good. Oh my god. Okay, so I know that when you hit the head, it doesn't actually disappear, which means... Since you can do so much damage to it, this probably means that the second phase will not allow me to heal. Which means I have 3 HP for multiple phases. That means I can't take any damage on the first phase, or else I'll be at a huge disadvantage on the next phase. That's what the game is telling me. The hints of the game are telling me that's how it's gonna work. Two more hits. I say I can't take any more damage, but whatever. Okay, I really I really can't take damage. Oh my god, that's so greedy. I'm too greedy. So let's try this out. Oh, it still hits me. Damn it. But I can hit it twice after the attack, which means that's... Like, really, that's actually really good damage, because it's 4 damage. Let's see if this works. Nope, damn, I can't make it. What is the range on this garbage staff? I hate this range so much. There we go. Phase one down. There's gotta be a second phase. Yeah, and I can't heal. I can't go left and heal, so this has to be this- You're kidding me. Oh, I can't heal. I see. So, whatever this is... Oh. Wait, what's going on? Why did I just- Why is the game not 8-bit anymore? Whoa, what the hell? That was a complete twist! What happened? Oh my god, everything's different! Wake up, Zoe. The eternal flame must be lit. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Wait. That is the ending. Oh! No, 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 don't be the ending, please. That's like that's like teasing at a next a sequel, right? Oh my god. Hold on a second. Let's turn the sound down a bit while I talk. Yeah, so You know what I was expecting when I saw that? I was expecting something similar to Symphony of the Night, Castlevania. Um in that game, once you finish the castle, you have to go through the reverse castle. So maybe this would have been like an extra area. I wouldn't expect this to be like the entire game in 16-bit. In I'd expect it to be uh, like maybe a boss rush or something in, in those graphics. And then you finally finish the boss and kill it one more time and then you, you beat it. Oh my god, what a teaser! Holy crap. That was, that was actually insane. 
Uh, I'm not gonna do my closing statements yet. I'm just gonna wait until the credits are finished rolling. I wonder if I can skip it. Guess not. Slow credits are slow. I'm I'm a little bit sad that uh, there was nothing after that, but it opens up the the potential of a sequel. I hope the mechanics are really up to date, like uh, SNES mechanics, Mega Man mechanics that are from Mega Man X or like Mega Man Seven, Mega Man and Base, those games. It'll be really cool, or like Super Castlevania instead of regular Castlevania. Uh, just, you know, since you're gonna go for the retro feel anyway, and you're upgrading to the next tier, um, yeah, you might as well do that in the next game. I'm looking forward to it. Damn. Achievement unlocked. All was awakening? Question mark? 6 hours and 42 minutes, 80 out of 99 orbs, map 97%, items 85%, death count 125. Not too bad for a blind playthrough, I guess. Not too bad indeed. Alright, so uh, closing statements. Overall, the game was good for what it was trying to do. The retro style, NES style game. The focus on the magic staff was really nice, but as a fan of more action oriented Metroidvanias, where I actually like to jump around and blink around and stuff, where you have character abilities rather than weapon abilities. So instead of like Mega Man style, which is basically what this game is kind of like, you get weapon abilities that do something to the map or, you know, allow you to have mobility, but it's really weapon-based rather than character-based. I would have liked more character abilities in the game, honestly. As for the genre itself, the mechanics, to this day, I, I use Teslagrad as a standard for puzzle metroidvanias. Teslagrad has both really cool puzzle aspects, as well as action, uh, like blinking around and other abilities. And like the story is actually above average for a Metroidvania. Because Metroidvania stories, let's be honest here, I love the genre, but the stories are pretty mediocre most of the time. Um, and Teslagrat had an above average story. The it, like it wasn't really explicit, right? Which was what made it interesting. You had to explore the story by yourself through the the art, the background. Uh, and of course, the puzzles in that game were really nice. For for this game, like, I still stand by the point that the Magic Staff idea was great. I mean, it's the central gimmick of this game. Um, it would be strange if the game didn't focus around it. I would have actually liked more stuff that the character could have done. That's my only issue, I guess. And the music, as you can hear, the music is really good. The final two areas were kind of bland, though. I didn't like those, those songs, but... Uh, Central Allwell is really nice, and overall the soundtrack is really good. Like, just listen to this. Right? This is so cool. So the music is definitely one of the, the strong points of the game. The graphics, pixel graphics, NES style, you know, it's, it's good for what it is. You can't really compare it to, like, Crisis or Final Fantasy XV. Just crazy, crazy graphics. The graphics are, are beautiful for this kind of game. Um, it looks really nice. You get a really uh, nostalgic feeling from this game, and it does it right. Unlike a lot of games that use pixel art, the pixel art in this game is actually quite loyal to NES. And uh, yeah, it was, it's really cool and nostalgic. The story is non-existent, I would say. I mean, nothing really gets resolved, right? The ending was, was kind of bland. Maybe there's like a post-game thing that I missed, and maybe I need to light the altar or whatever the, the ending was. It feels more like a teaser to the next game, but if it, if it is some kind of post-game thing, I don't know. I might check it out. Maybe if I don't post a video of it, tell me in the comments or tell me on Twitter without spoiling it. Just say like, oh, uh, there's more to the game. You know, maybe check it out. But I think it's just a teaser, honestly. Um, like I said during the playthrough, I did I did not expect this game to have like, an insane story. It's just NES style, simple story, very generic somewhat boring, but, you know, it just pushes the, the game along, so that's all that really matters. Um, it's not like Final Fantasy XV where it's trying to give you an epic story, but the only epic thing about the story is how fail it is. The gameplay was good, the story was terrible. 
the world building in this game is bare at best. You have an idea of what's going on, you have an idea of what happened in the past, but it really doesn't add much to the game or the story, um, and it doesn't really go anywhere as well. So that's the problem. The story is like a dead end in this game. If you're looking for story, I don't know why you would be looking for story though with a game like this, but if you are, then this is not the right game for you. Uh, I would definitely explore another game or another genre even. Uh, we'll see though when, this, when the sequel comes out. That tease at the end, maybe we'll get actual story because SNES games are known for having much stronger stories in general than NES games. Uh, let's see, let's talk about the gameplay a little bit more then. Uh, the core of the game is the gameplay because it is a Metroidvania and a platformer after all, and those genres are very gameplay focused. The backtracking aspect of the game was a little frustrating due to the lack of warps and mobility. Basically, I, I've emphasized the point about the Magic Staff being the core gameplay mechanic, and well, the thing is, if you compare this game to other Metroidvanias, they have a ton of warps everywhere, and your character has mobility abilities, like double jumping, dashing, air dashing, speed booster, more dashing and air dashing, whatever it is. Um, this game just doesn't have any of that, so it feels really, really slow. And if you're going to have a slow game, at least have more warps. I think this game only has like seven warps or something, which is definitely not enough. You can put warps everywhere, um, just so backtracking isn't as frustrating. It doesn't hurt the game in terms of the progress. So let's say you're moving through an area and you put a warp in there. What's the warp going to do, right? The warp allows you to go to other areas. It doesn't help you progress in the area that you're currently in. Uh, that you're trying to finish, right? So it doesn't hurt to have the warps, it doesn't actually affect anything except during backtracking. Um, and to make the player give them more incentive to backtrack, I think more warps would have been necessary. Um, aside from that, some parts of the game were just really unintuitive, like the waterfall, that really annoyed me. Uh, as someone who's played a lot of games like this, it's not, it's not a good way to... It's just not good. Don't do that. Um, and also the reliance on invisible walls. For me, I always check all the suspicious walls, or as many as I can, um, but some of the walls in this game are required to progress or to escape, especially in the stone cellar. Again, just giant X, no please. It's just utterly annoying and frustrating. If you don't want to frustrate your player, don't do that. Um, if you're not familiar with those elements in this game, or in this genre, you're likely going to find yourself stuck, frustrated, or quitting the game. So yeah, just, just be careful as a developer, and as a warning to the, the people who are actually playing the game as gamers, that is a potential in something like this. But regardless of the frustrating elements, I personally enjoy the game because the game hits the niche that I'm in. I love retro games, I love platformers, I love Metroidvanias to death, so, unless there are some really, 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 really bad mechanics that just piss me off and are, are game-breaking, or deal-breaking, not game-breaking, I'll likely have the patience to play the game to the very end, just like this game. Um, and luckily, if it, you can even say it's luck, there really aren't that many negatives to this game. You know, it's, it's a retro Metroidvania. It's a game that's for the NES, except it was released in 2017. That's how you gotta think of it, like. So, for that, it's good. As for recommendations, I talked a little bit about you know, the caveat of what makes this game good, what's frustrating about it, and like kind of the the niche aspect of it. It's a big maybe for the recommendation. Um, if you're in the target demographic like I am, if you like retro games, Metroidvanias, and platformers, then I definitely recommend this one. Um, it's probably something you don't want to miss, because it captures the element of the genre quite well. Uh, it's not as good as other retro games, to me, anyway. Um, it's not as good as Environmental Station Alpha and Cave Story. Those two games are exceptionally good, but I mean, it's very hard to compare with them, I think. And in this game, you don't feel like a badass like you do in Dust and A Legend Tale or Salt and Sanctuary, two other Metroidvanias that are very combat-focused. But still, it's it's still really fun. Also, Tesla Grad. It, doesn't really compare to Tesla Grad in terms of a puzzle platformer as well, so that's another thing to keep in mind. It doesn't really hit the right buttons as a platformer and as a puzzle game. 
And I, I wish the puzzle aspect of the game was fleshed out a bit more. Because, you know, when I was playing this game, if you watched the playthrough, um, you would have noticed that I, I praised certain puzzles and certain mechanics that involved like combining the blocks, com combining the bubbles, combining the lightning. When you put them all together and uh, you try to, you know, solve the room, essentially, that's what made the game really fun for me. But there really weren't that many moments like that, except in the final area. But even then, you know, it's just like, what, six, seven rooms that were like that? I would have liked a lot more, because Tesla Grad has like 30 of them or something, or more than that even. I don't even remember. If you're not in the target demographic, I don't think you would like this game. It's too niche, both the gameplay and otherwise. The graphics, the sound, all of it. Um, if you're feeling like a masochist, maybe give it a try. But I don't think it's for the general audience. The thing is, uh, games like this, games like Rise and Shine that I played recently, are considered way too difficult for the casual gamer. And even though I find the games to be relatively easy, or, you know, I die sometimes, it's kind of frustrating, but I overcome it, and, you know, I'm okay with the game being at this difficulty level. But the casual gamer is not going to find it okay. And if you're a casual gamer, or if you're not a hardcore gamer, then I don't think this game will be very fun for you, because it's going to be really hellish. You know, I, I've been playing games for like over 20 years now, and I have a lot of experience with a variety of genres. If you don't fit that description, this game might not be for you, is essentially what I'm trying to say. Uh, in terms of the price, I actually waited until the game came out before I could make this judgment. It's 10 bucks for this game, 10 bucks base price. And uh, for this game, I think 10 bucks is quite worth it. If you're a fan of the genre, it's a fair price for sure, because the game offers five to seven hours of gameplay when you don't count backtracking and exploring. But like I always say, if you're on the fence, maybe wait until it goes on sale. If it goes on sale for like five bucks, I think that would be a little more convenient for most people. Um, if you want to compare value, Rise and Shine basically is the gutter of value in terms of platformers that I played recently. It's a good game, but uh, in terms of how long you can play the game for, two bucks, I mean, uh, what is it, two hours? Not two bucks. Two hours for 15 bucks is not worth it. Definitely not worth it. This game is like, let's say five hours for 10 bucks. I think that's pretty fair. Um, if you want something with really good value and is also a, a retro Metroidvania, Environmental Station Alpha is like five or six bucks, if I recall correctly, and you get at least like eight to ten hours of gameplay with that. Um, so Always Awakening I think is, is pretty average in terms of value. But yeah, that's it for the closing statements. Once again, uh, I want to thank the developers, Elden Pixels, for the game. I appreciate the chance to get to play the game early and uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, but that's it for now. So you can like and subscribe on YouTube for more videos. You can follow me on Twitch for live streams, Twitter for updates, and uh, more in the description below for other stuff and links. I'm Ventus, this was Always Awakening, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.